Hi guys, uh, welcome back to Dharma Geosphere. Uh, today I will be interacting with you on the contributions of the British geographers. So unlike uh, um, Germany and uh, France, uh, geography uh, did not take off uh, the way it should have been in spite of uh, just being in the neighborhood of uh, Germany and France and the way Germany and France uh, developed uh, uh, geography uh, to such a great level. <laughs> so according to me, uh, uh, there could be at least three reasons why uh, uh, geography did not develop the way uh, it developed during its uh, contemporary uh, time in uh, Germany or France. First, it did not have uh, uh, Humboldt, uh, Karl Ritter, uh, Frederick Radzl, or uh, Hetner, and also uh, Paul Vidal de la Blache. So, absence of such stalwarts uh, uh, like these uh, made a lot of difference. Uh, and uh, geography, uh, you know, secondly, also lacked uh, um, the kind of uh, geographic entrepreneurs that were required to take geography uh, at, at the university and uh, uh, to the people. So this did not happen. And the third and probably one of the most important uh, reasons why geography did not take off uh, the way it took, took off in Germany and France is there too much uh, dependence on the inputs and information uh, from the uh, exploration and voyages uh, of uh, the different and uh, new lands. So this is how uh, geography got uh, really stuck and uh, did not take off uh, till some uh, amateur geographers uh, um, uh, took up the cause of geography, particularly the physical geography. And then, uh, of course, uh, you can't uh, uh, brush aside the contribution of uh, the likes of uh, MacAnder and Peter Haggett and Corley, etc who majorly, majorly contributed towards the development of uh, British geography. So they can, uh, I take up at least uh, 12 uh, important uh, um, names of geographers who have uh, contributed in a small or a big way. And these 12 geographers uh, from the British side are important. The first is a woman, uh, Mary uh, Somerville. Uh, she wrote a book on uh, physical geography, which had uh, um, chapters related to the physical aspects, particularly the uh, physiographic uh, features of uh, Britain, as well as uh, the climatology and also related to oceans, etc. Uh, <clears throat> somehow, uh, um, her contribution uh, did not uh, flower the way it should have, though she had contributed. Of course, she cannot be compared to the another woman uh, that is uh, Ellen Semple Churchill who immensely contributed uh, as an American geographer which we will uh, understand uh, on uh, how she went about uh, uh, contributing uh, so much in uh, the man-environment uh, relationship and as a very staunch and a firm uh, determinist how she uh, carried on being another very important uh, woman geographer. So that for that uh, we'll see uh, later. And then we also had uh, Francis uh, Galton who made the first uh, weather map and also dwelt into the cause, uh, specific causes of patterns of uh, anti-cyclone. And then of course uh, we have this uh, Mackenda whose heartland theory uh, became very, very popular. Uh, he was very clear in, uh, he, uh, in what he said was th those who uh, control the uh, heartland of Eastern Europe, uh, control the uh, Eastern Europe, those who control uh, world -like, um, island will control the uh, entire world and uh, those who control the Eastern Europe and the world island will eventually control the whole world. But for him, his basic uh, view was the heartland. He felt that uh, this heartland is, uh, was inaccessible and it was uh, surrounded by seas and ports which was very vulnerable uh, for attacks. So he said those who control the heartland indirectly control the entire world.
Of course, then we have that uh, Rimland theory and all that that we will see uh, when we uh, talk about the political geography. Uh, then, uh, of course, another very important uh, British geographer was uh, Patrick Geddes. Uh, he uh, brought in a very interesting relationship between city and uh, region. Uh, for him, uh, he plays this uh, in a um, <coughs> kind of a, a sloping uh, <coughs> Uh, relationship of uh, place, uh, work and uh, folk. That's a very interesting uh, studies he made on uh, specific city and uh, um, region context. And then came of course uh, the Herberstein uh, who was truly uh, staunch and a very practical determinist. So if you're writing about uh, determinism, you can't afford to uh, miss, miss out on uh, the contribution of uh, Herbestein because many both uh, in the uh, German and France and uh, including America and all that they recognize and acknowledge him to be the true uh, determinist who gave very convincing arguments of what uh, environmental determinism is. And then uh, you have this uh, Ogilvy, uh, he brought in uh, um, regional uh, variations in uh, Britain and he captured them uh, <coughs> uh, both theoretically and also in practical terms. He visited many of these uh, regions and he brought in the regional variations in geography of entire Britain. And then uh, Rossby uh, took up that work and uh, followed it up and uh, made it a, uh, the entire regional geography as a very systematic uh, um, study of uh, variations in uh, regions. And then you have uh, William Smith. Uh, William Smith, according to me, is perhaps the only economic geography uh, uh, um, person no one else either in Germany or France actually dealt economic geography as a separate discipline but here is uh, perhaps the first uh, geographer who dealt the economic geography of the entire Britain understanding uh, the how the resources are distributed how they are available and how uh, these resources can be used in a very sustainable manner and then came uh, the uh, Robert Mill Robert Mill studied uh, various domains of uh, geography but uh, he is very well known for the stress and the importance and focus he brought on the study of water and the water systems available in uh, Britain. And then you had uh, one of um, my favorite and a very interesting uh, uh, British geographer that is uh, John F. Uh, Unstead. Uh, he uh, <coughs> named uh, the smaller uh, regions, he divided these regions in what he called as features. Uh, features is a very independent, unique uh, region and each of these uh, features was further divided into stows. So he related uh, the stows and features to the Charles Darwin's uh, organism, uh, but of course uh, <clears throat> he could not explain the continuity, but later on uh, he dwelt on uh, the theory of organism uh, along with the uh, concepts of geography of continuity and all that and then he brings in the term germplasm to explain that yes uh, even in uh, geography uh, akin to the way germplasm moves uh, the geographical concepts of features and stoves also can move like that. So that was a very interesting uh, study uh, later on <coughs> when we uh, talk about uh, the regional geography I'll uh, tell you more detail on how interestingly he um, uh, matches uh, the way organism uh, is made and the evolution of organism with the evolution of the concept of feature and stars etc. And then of course uh, the two great uh, men who jointly propounded the quantitative revolution as well as uh, the um, uh, theory of uh, location and the location analysis these two geographers you please remember because nowadays there is a lot of talk about this uh, these two gentlemen because they have revived their own uh, concepts i will of course be dealing with uh, um, peter haggett uh, in particular 
because that is from the examination of point of view, it's very, very important because he very recently uh, revived the concept of locational analysis. Of course, along with him was uh, Richard Corley. Uh, both of them are uh, instrumental in bringing about the quantitative revolution. Uh, both in Britain and uh, elsewhere. Their theories are well accepted and well proven and uh, they are being used uh, even till uh, today. So this is the, this is the let's say laundry list of uh, 12 geographers uh, from uh, Britain who have contributed each in their own way and uh, their contributions brought in a lot of uh, um, uh, inputs and uh, it gave impetus for geography to firmly establish in two of the world's best uh, universities that is uh, Oxford and Cambridge. So I'll, uh, we will now um, see each of the 12 geographers uh, individually how and how, what they have specifically contributed. I'll just show you a slideshow. So we will see the uh, contributions of uh, the uh, British uh, geographers. So this is the British uh, School of Geography near the Metropolis. The so here is the uh, list of uh, geographers in which I have uh, told you in the um, overview. Uh, Mary Somerville, Francis Galton. Uh, Mackinda, uh, Patrick Geda, um, Herberston, uh, Ogilevy, Roxby, V. William Smith, uh, Herb Robert Mill, and uh, John of uh, Unstead, and then of course uh, Richard Corley and Peter Haggett. So, this is uh, Mary uh, <coughs> Somerville who wrote this uh, book on uh, the physical geography, which included uh, the Earth's surface. Of what uh, remember as uh, Edur Kunde, uh, including the oceans and uh, uh, other features. This is Francis Galton, who was the first to map uh, the uh, weather conditions in Britain and also was the first scholar to demonstrate the weather patterns and also uh, identify the nature of air circulation in an anti cyclone formation. Uh, this is, of course, uh, the great. Uh, Alfred Mackender, who was father of the uh, British geography, he was highly imaginative and uh, highly uh, visionary uh, in uh, geography. He was a very active lecturer who used to move around several universities, giving his lectures, trying to um, imbibe the geographic sense in many of the scholars and the uh, students. Uh, in his opinion. <laughs> The subject has to bridge the natural science and uh, humanities and take at its core the interaction of man in society and environment as it varies locally. <coughs> then the Heartland theory of uh, Mackenda, you should uh, <coughs> remember that the most accessible, inaccessible part of the world, he called, named it as uh, the Heartland as uh, the heartland was surrounded by various geographical uh, barriers. So he uh, summarized his view of uh, the global strategy of uh, the geopolitics in his famous lines. Uh, in the uh, uh, exam, they may just give this uh, quote and ask you to describe or explain. Uh, so what he says is, who rules uh, East Europe uh, commands the heartland? And who rules heartland commands the world island, and the, who rules the world island commands the world. So indirectly, uh, whoever rules the heartland uh, commands and controls the world. So in his theory, he declares that uh, throughout the history, uh, the coastal lands had always proved uh, vulnerable to attack from the heartland, and the heartland remained. Uh, uh, invulnerable because sea power could be uh, denied access to it. So his regional concept also pervaded his interpretation of uh, the various uh, countries 
and uh, his book again on Britain and uh, British seas was also very popular and then along with Robert Mill he wrote a book on the realm of nature in which uh, he discusses the uh, way uh, races are spread out throughout the world in geographic terms and uh, how they survived the vestiges of uh, the environment in which they surrounded. It's a very interesting book. Then come uh, the Sir Patrick uh, Geddes, he is a Scottish geographer. Uh, <clears throat> he was very innovative in thinking when it came to urban planning. So here you can see uh, his region, uh, um, the of city and region concept. You can see from place to work to folk it moves. And then uh, he uh, made a very illustrative book called The Region and City and also uh, wrote a book called Cities in Evolution. All are very interesting and they form uh, a benchmark book, a reference book for the urban geography which we will deal later. Then uh, his uh, constellation theory and also the uh, conurbations theory, uh, basically uh, it's, they relate to urban agglomeration and uh, he drew attention to the ability of new technology, particularly the electric power and the motorized transport uh, in the cities, which allowed the cities to spread and agglomerate together and gave us examples of midland towns, just like in England, you have the Ruhr in Germany, if you see uh, Connaught Place in uh, New Delhi, these are all uh, because of the ability of the city to have those uh, networks of uh, roadways and allow the transport. Mm, then uh, we come to Herbeston. He was an assistant to um, Geddes and also he was a contemporary of uh, Mackinder. Here is one man who was a staunch and a pure and to the core environmental determinist. So he stressed the on uh, land and man relationship and he presented a scheme for a division of the world into natural regions based on the association of uh, the surface features, climate and vegetation. And then um, Ogilvy, uh, he was uh, another British geographer who cited Great Britain's essays in regional geography. This book, uh, book gives a glimpse of uh, the regional variations in the physical and the cultural landscapes of Britain. And of course, Roxbag uh, took this work um, further and he suggested a scheme which explained uh, uh, how to very systematically uh, develop the regional studies. He pointed out that a systematic regional study should deal with geology including its drainage, the landforms and its drainage, the coastline, climate, vegetation to demarcate the natural regions and this should, he said, should be followed by a man's relation to his physical environment. And then uh, Wilford Smith uh, is the first economic geographer. Uh, in the end, the entire uh, Europe and in and around that. So, for him, it was entirely based on the analysis of statistical data and he showed concern with the uh, relative field observation. Then, uh, Robert Mill, uh, he wrote uh, General Geography uh, and his first book, The Realm of Nature, was published which he emphasized the study of water. So here is the first geographer who emphasizes the need uh, on uh, use and sustaining uh, water for a long time. And then uh, John F. Uh, Anstead, uh, he proposed a classification of uh, geographic regions. As I told you, he argued that the smallest unit in the Earth's surface is a feature and that these features or individual domains can be grouped on uh, resemblance or uh, matching criteria to give what is called as the first order region which he named as Taos. Such classes can be success, uh, successively grouped into the other higher order categories called tracks or minor regions and the major regions. 
a kind of a hierarchy moving from <clears throat> the future to star to track to minor region to major regions etc so he tried to compare uh, these regions as organisms the way organisms evolve comparable with the biological organisms um, inherited from the darwinian theory of evolution so he compared uh, when he was questioned about the uh, continuity he compared continuity of existence in a region with that of the germ plasm of organism through the successive generation on how the geological and uh, geographic landforms evolved over time then corley and uh, haggett are very well known for their major contribution in the quantitative revolution of britain and elsewhere they made enormous use of sophisticated statistical techniques formulated uh, well tested models and theories in the field of both human and uh, social geography a number of books were written by uh, both of them <coughs> some major works are uh, models in human geography locational analysis uh, in human geography so um, there could be a uh, likely question maybe uh, in 20 or uh, 2021 on the contribution of uh, peter hagge and uh, corley related to locational analysis in human geography because there is a lot of talk and discussion going on and uh, peter hagge uh, himself and his uh, contemporaries and students have come up with newer models on how to detect uh, the locational analysis so this is the locational analysis in human geography which focuses on not only spatial organization but also the tributary areas uh, which are taken as uh, major nodes so this hagets locational analysis uh, human human geography please uh, go through this not only the slide uh, and what focus uh, it is on and uh, the various uh, criticisms of uh, uh, his uh, locational analysis and his uh, counters and his later um, contributions related to location analysis so that is all uh, guys uh, for today i have uh, shown you how this 12 uh, geographers from uh, britain contributed please remember they are easy um, common names and each of uh, each one of them uh, has uh, contributed uh, in their own uh, uh, small or uh, big ways but whatever they these 12 contributed uh, remain uh, to be the major contributions and continued for a very long time and uh, particularly macander <coughs> and uh, peter hagget uh, so guys uh, that is all uh, for today i'm glad uh, the way many of you particularly taking up the <coughs> mains exam in 2020 are uh, progressing uh, all the best to you i'll try to cover as many topics as possible um, before uh, december so that everything is there in your mind and you can write very good answers so stay tuned uh, we'll soon be uh, completing the contributions we just have uh, the contributions of american geographers which i will very soon take up mm -hmm. and then uh, of course so we the uh, contributions of uh, russian geographers then later on we will move on to the concepts and the other parts of geography please be uh, rest assured that i will cover all the topics but all that you have to do is just plug in uh, these videos in your ears because this is the essence of uh, uh, what i have uh, <coughs> grasped from these the three books which i have mentioned uh, in the my first video so it will be very easy just keep listening and listen to them repeatedly you can get the um, crux of it so that those few points uh, <coughs> you can easily go and uh, write provided you have listened to all the uh, videos because there is a thread there is a flow of uh, geographical thought from uh, one country to the other so if you, once you have uh, understood these uh, contributions the um, theories and the perspectives which we will be discussing uh, later will become easy so this part 
may appear uh, complex, but once you get the hang of it, you can score well. So if it is complex, it is easy for you. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, because it's a competitive exam, you can easily score over others. So guys, um, all the best. Stay confident, at least as far as the geography option is concerned. Uh, stay focused and go and kill. So I'll uh, soon be catching you up on uh, the contribution of American geographers at the soonest. By that time, by the time I complete uh, American and Russian, you should have uh, completed the entire uh, contributions of geography so that we can quickly move on to the concept. We'll start with aerial differentiation. Of course, determinism, possibilism, I've already done it, but I'll do it again. Okay, guys, uh, stay safe, study well. Just, just a few months and you're good. You're ready to go. You're on your way to Abbasna. Okay then guys, bye.